Hey there, and happy Monday. Adele, your alignment educator and coach here with a hot topic tonight. What do you do if you get bitten by a tick? First of all, I invite you to like and subscribe if you're on YouTube to this video. Um, share it with your friends as a resource and a tool because this topic is important for everyone to know. And you know how I know? Because I get asked this question more often than not. Either friends and family find a tick and want to know what to do, attach tick on themselves or a family member, or they find signs of potential Lyme disease or other tick-borne illnesses and they want to know what to do next and what next steps to take. And what I'm going to share with you today are the first five steps that you can take if you find a tick that has bitten you or someone you know and love, or five steps you can still take even if you never find a tick bite and you still suspect Lyme disease or a tick-borne illness might be impacting your life or loved ones too. So you can choose your own adventure from this set of five action steps. And also even better news for you. What I'm going to do after this video is I'm going to go back in and link you also to my tick bite action plan. It's a free download document right to your email that I created based on our family's needs, our family's needs. I, as the mama bear in our family, um, I myself healing from Lyme disease and having a few of our kids also healing from Lyme disease and other tick-borne illnesses too, all of us, I was finding myself spiraling at the thought of ticks impacting our lives, meaning I was not even able to like function in the face of a tick bite anymore. And this was a change in me, an anxiety-ridden, fear-driven change that wasn't the empowered, peaceful conqueror that I wanted to be um, in my healing journey and my kids' healing journeys. And my kids were seeing this in me and I was not proud of it. And I recognized that it comes with the territory. There are things in life that we are fearful of. It just is, it is what it is. And I don't love, and I don't recommend moving forward in life um, in a spirit of fear. So I didn't want to stay in that place, but also fear can be motivating. <laughs> my hair today is not motivating. Uh, fear can be motivating, but also important in the face of fear is recognizing that it always is going to exist potentially in some way, shape, or form. We're always going to face fears and scary things in life. Life is not without those things. So then what? How do we move through the fear? And that's what's important here and now in this topic, actually, because I approach healing in light of Lyme disease and tick-borne illnesses, co-infections, all that junk. I approach that from a stance of empowerment and peace that we always have empowerment and peace to claim for ourselves. We always have choices and we always have an opportunity for even just a sliver. Sometimes it's just a sliver, but it's there of peace and comfort in a situation that might feel out of control or out of hand or unbearable. And so, because I approach healing from that perspective, I said, Adele, you need to approach um, your tick issues from that perspective too. It's not just about healing from the ticks. It's about dealing with the ticks in an empowered and peaceful way. So especially so my kids could see that in their mama. And that was a motivating factor for me. And also not wanting to live like that anymore myself, not wanting to live in that space because stress is sickness. They're, they equate. Stress equates to sickness at some point in time. And I didn't want extra stress on me and my family and my life. So five action steps for what to do when bitten with a tick. You ready? Number one, stay calm, please. Stay with me too, though. Don't underestimate the power of this first step. I know it's so easy to say, say, oh, stay calm. But I'm telling you, that was the most important first step for me. And I know it is for a lot of you when dealing with something scary 
however scary a tick is in your world. Staying calm means take a step back for a hot second if you need to. Take a breath, count to 10. You've got that amount of time. Yes, time is of the essence, but also as with any high stress or emergency situation even, our fight or flight response can override our peace and our empowerment and our judgment sometimes too. So while acting fast is important, take a moment, even 10 seconds or less, to regulate your nervous system, to calm down, to do some quick tapping, regulate your vagus nerve a little, okay? Apply a quick swipe of an essential oil. That's my go-to. A little valor for courage on mama. If I see a tick in the premises before I proceed, it is important or I wouldn't have put it on here. And it's not a trite commentary on staying calm. Okay. It's important. It's healing to find your calm and your peace in any circumstance, even the worst case ones. Okay. Number two, remove the tick. I know Again, might sound obvious, but it's sometimes hard to know how to proceed with removing a tick. I go over all of this. I'm actually on my blog and in my Design Your Holistic Lime Healing Blueprint, we talk about tick removal. I talk about it a lot of times in my world, okay? It's very simple. You don't need anything except a good pair of tweezers. So ditch any other notion of, you know, putting something on the tick to get it to withdraw. Don't do any of that. That's bad advice. It can cause worse response from the tick, which means worse chance of the tick implanting more saliva or gut contents into you, which is more of a chance of illness spreading to you. So don't agitate the tick any more than to just quick remove it with tweezers, grasping by the head and pulling back briskly and swiftly and firmly in the direction the tick was entering um, the skin. If the tick has broken skin at all, saliva has potentially been communicated to you and or whoever it's bitten, and that is worth taking seriously. Again, not from a place of fear as much as a place of knowledge and proactivity. So you remove the tick and save it, even if it's squashed up guts. (laughs) Save it, even if you don't think it's savable. Put it in a Ziploc baggie, label it with where you live, like town and city or state, town or city and state, (laughs) Um, even time of day, um, some some tick testing companies want to know that. And that's what I'm getting to next, getting this tick tested. But usually they want to know the location on the body it was, where it was found. um, And if it was on your property, sometimes I write that like backyard, front yard. Also, it's for my benefit too, to keep track of things. Um, You don't have to put Well, some tick testing companies, yes, you do have to put name and birth date on it as well. So check that too, but at least label it with like the date that you took it off. So you are um, not forgetting what day that happened. And then check for um, step number three, local or national tick testing companies that you can use to send that tick in and get it tested. Testing the actual tick is the most reliable way of knowing at least some of what that tick might've been carrying and possibly transmitting. It's mostly reliable because they can test the tick's DNA like down to that level. So they don't need a full tick to test. A little squish of a tick is enough for most reputable testing sites. So I know um, in my state, Pennsylvania, there's a free test available. It is not fully comprehensive, but it tests for some of the, like four of the top major tick-borne illnesses, including Lyme. Um, you can pay to upgrade that test and test for more things. And the most comprehensive panel it tests for here in my state tests for just about every major tick-borne illness or co-infection possible, except for two, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever and Q Fever. So um, those two would be left out if you had symptoms of those. You definitely want to test yourself then down the road, but um, or you know get treated. But um, that's pretty comprehensive. Everything minus two. All right. Um, so technology and some other national sites test for ticks, um, for a nominal fee and it's worth it. I think it's worth it because you can never test a human as thoroughly and accurately, well, as accurately as you can test a tick. 
So it's really helpful to know what that tick was carrying because you may never be able to test yourself or whoever's bitten as well for if they ever develop any odd symptoms or weirdness in their health after a tick bite. That brings me to my fourth point, which to me is just as important as testing the tick, honestly. Get treatment immediately. Don't delay. Even that same day if you can. If it's the weekend or after hours for your doctor, get to urgent care. Even the ER, it's not too excessive if that's your best option for time and energy spent and even money spent. Sometimes it is cheaper to go to the ER. I'm all about using medical resources appropriately, and I firmly believe that this is acceptable. I'm a nurse myself, if you don't already know that, and I would be very judicious about you know, how to use medical resources um, in light of whatever's going on um, in the world around us or in your case personally. But in this case, early treatment is best treatment. Not every doctor, unfortunately, will recognize that and may make treatment difficult. Um, but here's why and what the game plan can look like beyond that. Early treatment with antibiotics or effective herbals, which you're not going to necessarily find if you go to a traditional medicine facility, but so I'm just going to say early treatment is shown to be the more effective for long-term outcomes, but it is dependent on the proper length of treatment as well. Six to eight weeks minimum is the best recommendation from Lyme literate providers and the International Lyme Association too. So traditional medicine physicians are not trained in that. They are not typically or at all recommending that or following through with that recommendation. But if you can get any amount of treatment immediately, even if it's just a couple weeks of antibiotics, that is worth it to then pursue Lyme literate treatment, if at all possible. I highly recommend if you can't get full course of proper treatment, um, which is typically more than even just one antibiotic, um, depending on what your tick, especially depending on what your tick comes back positive for, um, you're going to want to seek a Lyme literate provider, basically the equivalent to like a Lyme specialist that is trained in tick-borne illnesses. Because let me ask you this, if you had an orthopedic injury or needed back surgery, let's say, would you go to an oncologist, a cancer doctor for your back surgery? Not if it didn't involve cancer, you wouldn't. You'd go to the orthopedic specialist. If you had cancer, would you go see an orthopedist? Not unless they had to be consulted for another reason, but you'd go to an oncologist, a cancer specialist, to treat your specific needs. This is no different. Not every doctor is trained well in every case scenario. And when you need specialized care, you need to look for a Lyme literate provider. I do have resources that talk about how to find a good one and where to turn for that. But in the meantime, just know that getting treatment immediately buys you some time to then get in with a Lyme literate specialist who can then treat you fully and thoroughly further. Um, and also take into consideration co-infections and the results of the tick testing. I am saying get treatment immediately because you should not delay to wait on the results of the tick test. You can always stop treatment if it's completely negative and you're not symptomatic. But waiting for the tick test or waiting for symptoms to appear is not proactivity, it's not empowerment, and it's not actually proceeding from a place of peace um, in my mind because you're waiting for the shoe to drop instead of taking action immediately to prevent that from happening. And more ticks than not carry illnesses. It is rare um, to find that they're not carrying something. So treating makes more sense from a quantitative perspective as well. Um, it's kind of like the better safe than sorry mentality. Also, symptoms in humans don't always show up immediately. In fact, they can be very delayed if at if showing up at all. And symptoms can be very atypical. It's not always a fever and a bullseye rash and very specific, you know, um, flu-like symptoms or anything like that. Symptoms of Lyme disease can look like that. And those are the most common ones in some cases. But there's a lot of other nuances to how Lyme or other co-infections from ticks can present. And some of those co-infections can be just as dangerous and detrimental to health as Lyme 
or worse. I'm looking at you, Bartonella. So that was tip number four. And that's a big one to me because that kind of can determine the course of the future and healing long-term in any situation. And so that brings me to point number five, which is not only getting treatment, um, not, not only is getting treatment important on this list, but how should I put this? Evaluating your whole health as a whole person is now crucial more than ever. If you haven't already been doing that with your life and lifestyle, then now is your wake up call at the, in the case of a tick bite in particular to get on board with your whole person healing. What is your emotional health like, your mental health, your spiritual health, and your physical health? How's your gut? How's your immune system? How is your stress and your sleep? How's your exercise? What are your eating habits like and your overall nutrition, not just your gut health? And if you don't know what I mean by some of those terms or what I'm getting at by saying those things, then you're probably not addressing them in your health and healing journey and in just being a person of optimal wellness. So you want to get well above the wellness line. You don't want to be even hovering there because if you are fighting anything from a tick bite, it's automatically putting you at a disadvantage, but it doesn't have to. You fight back with more than just treatment. You fight back with your whole body health, your whole lifestyle, your whole person, more than just your physical being. So know that right from the start, that's your wake up call to take your entire body, self, spirit, mind, emotions, everything, community, even around you, all of it, take it seriously and evaluate the steps that need to be taken to optimize your wellness on every level. Now I know that might sound overwhelming and that is certainly not what I'm trying to get at. I'm, like I said, all about empowerment and peace. And I've actually developed what that looks like, uh, optimizing and upgrading your health, whole person health, holistic health from a place of empowerment and peace that actually saves time and energy and even money along the way. Because that's what I had to figure out. And it took me over 20 years to get to the bottom of what that could look like. Customizing to individuals, but yet still maintaining pillars that apply to us all. And when I discovered what that could look like, I made it into a program because it needs to get out there. And it's called Design Your Holistic Lime Healing Blueprint. Because you get to take the pillars and design your blueprint for your optimal wellness and healing journey. Whether treating or not treating, with whatever treatment you choose, it's customizable because you're unique. So the reason I mention this is because this tick bite action plan is what I've designed as just a piece of the whole big picture of what it can look like. So if you're interested at all in this blueprint program, I have to tell you now because there's currently at the time of this recording, very limited number of seats at a case study price. I've opened up a case study for this program at 90% off. It has a few very basic requirements and requires a quick five to 10 minute chat with me before entrance into this case study program, because it's actually a huge deal. And it's a really cool opportunity. It's access for life with all upgrades and all bonuses and everything for life at 90% off. And yes, even with that payment plans are still available guys, and you still get a 60 day money back guarantee on your product. All right. So if that is something that's for you and you're like, Hmm, that means we need to talk. Or if you're like, oh my word, so-and-so in my life needs to hear about this. Let's hook up and talk about it because there doesn't have to even be any sale. We just have to be opening up the doors of discussion around what empowerment and peace in your healing can look like. And I'm the place to start with that. We'll chat and we'll see what good fits look like for you. And this program just might be it. And I'm telling you, these case study spots are super limited. There are 10 max and doors, doors shut, doors close, okay, on that opportunity. Never to be seen again. Anyway, make sure you're um, chatting with me about the case study in the Blueprint program. 
Make sure you're downloading your free action plan after this video, sharing with your friends so they have access to. And um, hey, while you're at it, in the description, hop into Limey and Crunchy if you're not in there already either. It's another freebie I offer, our free holistic healing community full of tips, tricks, education, fun, encouragement, all of it, all along the way. All right, you guys, that's all for now. Cheers to beating the ticks. <laughs> One tick at a time. That's all it takes. Stand in your peace. Stand in your empowerment.